Hi, my name is Tim. I have a weird hobby, and it's designing keyboards. And today I'm gonna walk you through how I design keyboards and how all these new features can really help me to make things a lot more visually interesting. To start off, here's just a blank layout of a keyboard. This is our starting point, and we'll start filling it in right now. I put together some components for the different types of keys. You have your modifiers, your alphas, your special characters, and by default, you know, they, they might look something like this. I chose a narrow but heavy font for this to really go for this vibe. And they look perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with it. Like with this, you could design a really nice set of keycaps to go on your board. To spruce things up a bit, I also designed some interesting bits we can uh, use on the caps. Just some visual flourishes. And the keys might look a bit like this. I only designed a single part of what we'll have here because we want it to look like this. Luckily with the new repeater functionality, I can quickly go in and I can override how many times I want to use this. And I will just repeat this. And we do the same real quick for here. So you can kind of see how that works. And even here in the end. So. And as you can see for this dot grid we have here, I'm actually stacking two repeats on top of each other. So if I hide the first one, this one takes care of the vertical repeat right here. And then the other one is what fills it up horizontally. And you might've seen this little icon we have here. It's actually made with a repeater. I started off with a simple shape like this and then I added a repeat transform on it that will repeat it radially uh, four times. So far, so good. These are fun things that we can uh, use. But what if we add some more to this, obviously? We have so many new features available that we'd love to use here. So for example, let's go back to our little leaf icon that we made with the repeater. We can add some fun drop shadows to I don't know, just add some color to this. But we can push it even further if we want to. The layer blur now supports progressive blur. And what that means is that it will blur it more at the end than it will at the start. I can easily move it around or I can change the values. I can go wild, I can go back, tone it down a bit. Let's put it back here. So this little flower now I don't know how to describe it. It looks like a, it's a bit like on fire. There are not flames. There's lovely, colorful gradient going on. But I really want a gritty feeling for what I'm working on here. And I can do that by just adding a, a texture uh, effect. And this texture effect gives it that, that lovely textured, gritty feeling that I was trying to go for here. I can play with the settings. I can play with like how intense I want it. But this is the lovely uh, result we get from, from that. Just like we did with the little flower here, we can do the same with the alphas and with the special uh, characters. Now I do feel like one thing is still missing. I think the, the legends, which is what we call the thing that's actually like the shape that is printed on the cap, how about we add a little noise layer to this? And again, I can play with this, the size or like the density to really get it into a place I want. I can even change the color of this if I want. I can make it red. But I do think that what we had before, the color speckle, um, I really like how this uh, sits on, on the cap. And it will look great. Uh, on the final product. Just tweak some final things. Yeah, I think this is this is where it sits well. So add it to the other keys as well. And it's hectic. It's also gritty and it is, it's not like anything I've seen before. And that's always something I kind of strive for. Like how can I do something new and unique? And it it's about experimentation. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It's totally fine. We're just like, we're not doing any physical products here yet. This is the first step. This is a step where it's really easy to quickly explore different things. 
And this is what our final result looks like. I can't wait to see what these look like 3D rendered and then later actually printed on caps. But you can see that the iconography or like the little illustrations that we put together for these larger modifier keys really, really shine with the effects that we added combined with the alphas and the special characters. And then for the space bar, I decided to do something uh, a bit more unique where I'm using one of our new brushes. And on top of that, I'm applying uh, a texture filter as well to like the brush is already distorted, but with the texture effect, we're distorting it even more. Again, going for that grainy, rough feeling. It's been a lot of fun taking the pixels off the screen and turning them into something real. So hopefully that inspires you to do the same.